Barry looks set to win that first frame, but it was pinched by Mark Williams on the final black after Barry missed the brown. So first blood to the two times world champion. He has the first frame on the board. He needs three more for a place in the round of 32. Winner of this, by the way, to play the Paul Davison. Or David Grace. They're in action at the moment. They're just underway. Ali Carter, meanwhile, has whitewashed Elliot Slesser. So the Cumin from Essex in England is through. And he'll now play Tony, oh, beg your pardon, Luca Bracell, the home yeah. favourite. And that should be, as we mentioned earlier, a really entertaining battle. Bracell, as we know, a very talented youngster. Mark Williams, one. Harry Pinches has won a PTC event. That came in 2010. So he knows about victory in these three-day tournaments, which ask a lot of the players. They've got to win seven matches, 28 frames over three days. And of course, they're only actually playing in two of the three. So pretty tall order to go all the way. As Williams misses again to the centre pocket, this time pushing it to the far jaw. Yeah, he actually got too much of it, didn't he? He went to the far jaw. Wasn't going to leave anything on, though. Oh, this could be a re-rack. Unless that's touching. Touching bulk. Oh, that gives Mark the opportunity to put the white in bulk. I mentioned earlier that uh, remarkable couple of matches that Pinch has played against Jimmy White and then Stephen Hendry at the World Championship back in 2004, beating White in the first round and losing to Hendry in a final frame to side of 13-12 in the second. And the more remarkable thing about that tournament for Pinches was that it came a full 13 years after he made his Crucible debut and he failed to get back to the Crucible in the intervening time. So he made his debut in 91, didn't get back there until 2004. That was a record at the time. Jamie Burnett has since equaled it. But he's a former English amateur champion, former world amateur championship runner-up to James Wattenart. Very fine amateur player who's never quite fulfilled his potential in the pro ranks. This man, of course, One. has more than fulfilled his potential. He's touched the heights. And I'm sure he'd love to add to that already impressive collection of silverware. Well, that's gone a little awry Six. in terms of the positional element of the shot. He has this red to right centre. Not quite as easy as it looks, though. Seven. Played it well. Once again, not ideal, but uh, he has the angle on the brown to get back to the reds. Well, as always, these players looking to get around the black spot as early as possible. 12. Good chance here for Mike Williams. Just uh, two or three reds open. He can develop more. Just thinking that first frame there, Phil, could be a massive turning point in this match. It, it, especially if Mike wins this one as well. He could be off into the distance. Well, that might have to go back onto the yellow spot unless he goes onto the pink. Williams furious with himself, a little careless to cover the black spot with a cue ball. Yeah, just thinking about that, again, 2-0 could become 3-0, but if Barry wins the first frame, we, we might be in for a, a tight encounter. We shall see what happens in the next couple of frames. Well, he had frame ball. Mr. Brown. Might well be best pleased with that shot because he's tied up the black in holding the spot. He's going to have to concentrate on the blue now. For the time being. 20. Ricky Walden has moved 3-0 in front against Patrick Einzel. 
So the World Championship semi-finalist of earlier this year is looking good for a place in the next round. Adita Mehta of India is 1-0 up against Ryan Causton. Jimmy White has pulled the frame back against Rod Lawler. 2-1 Lawler leads, although he's at the table again in frame four. On a break of 28. 26. Alan McManus, he's been in some pretty decent form of late as the veteran from Scotland and sometime Eurosport commentator, 1-0 up against Alfie Burden. McManus, of course, who ousted Judd Trump, the defending international champion in Chengdu, just a couple of weeks ago in a final frame decider. 31. And Fergal O'Brien, 1-0 up against David Morris. O'Brien, a former Masters runner-up. So lots of snooker being played on those outside tables, 11 of which are in use over the three days of competition. Pinch is, I'm sure, still thinking about the brown he missed, which would have given him that first frame. <coughs> Williams having to settle then for a 32-point lead in the early stages of frame two. The heavily tattooed Welshman. Looks as relaxed as ever. He's always been like that, Mark, hasn't he? So laid back, hasn't got a care in the world. <laughs> and a quick look at the other matches in that course. The casual look this weekend for the boys and it's PTC, normally the suits and the bow ties. It's good for a change, Phil. Good shot there. It's got Barry wrong sided. Eight centuries already in this Antwerp Open, and we've only been going half a day or so. Adam Duffy cracked in a 1-3-3 against Scott Donaldson earlier today. That's the highest so far. Mark Williams made one against Stephen Haworth in his opening match, and Judd Trump was also amongst the century makers against Chow Jin Long. Very nearly made back-to-back -back hundreds, did Trump. Broke down on 96 in the frame that gave him a 4-1 victory. Ding Zhongwei, yet again, scoring heavily. What a season he's having. Beat Ashley Carty 4-1 with a break of 103. Stephen Hendry, of course, still by a distance, the most prolific scorer in the history of the game with 775. Mark Williams among a very elite bunch of players to have made in excess of 300. He's on 305. Ding Zhongwei up to 3-3-2 now, and fifth on the all-time list behind the nugget, Steve Davis. He's in the jungle. He's a celebrity. Get him out of here. I must admit, I never realized that Steve was uh, fond of munching on bugs and somewhere tropical, but there you go. Be interesting to see how he progresses. 
You wouldn't put it past him to win that as well. He's won most things that he's competed in in his time. <laughs> Why not? I'm a celebrity. I think you'll relish the challenge, Mike. I think you'll be very popular, actually. Jimmy White has uh, blazed the trail for snooker players in terms of the jungle. That's not a great shot for Mark. He studied that long and hard, and he's played a poor one. Yes, he wanted to get them open and put a bit of pressure onto Barry, but didn't mean to leave one there near the corner. Shake of the head from Williams. He knows that was a loose one. Well, he's left one over the pocket, but the cue ball a long way short of the balk line. Good chance here for pinches to knock in the red and get back into this second frame. It's not only Ronnie's quote, isn't it? I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. Well, he was out for a season, wasn't he? Then came back and promptly won his fifth world title. He's already won a PTC this season as O'Sullivan. Early exit for him at the International Championship to prove he is human. But the events that uh, he really tends to thrive in, the blue ribboned snooker tournaments still to come of course with the UK the Masters and then the World Championship yes indeed still a wonderful player to watch when he's on it now Pinches has got lucky there he's played a bad shot and he's left absolutely nothing hence the rueful smile from Williams Well, speaking of Ronnie O'Sullivan, he has entered this event and he plays young Jack Jones tomorrow. One of the favourites this weekend, of course, is this man at the table is. William's not known for hanging around, but he's having to give this one a fair bit of thought. Not easy to leave anything safe. Looking for cover on the red over the left corner pocket, which he's got. Yeah, good shot there. Would have really have liked that white to be tied to the cushion, though. And it's still uh, a problem for Barry Pinches. Just move this red away from the corner pocket here. Tap the white down towards the yellow pocket. Well, he's going the other way. He's trying to put the white on the top cushion, I think.
over down the thin side and the white's a bit pacey and I think this red might pass the other to the corner here for Barry Pinches. Well, it looks like it will go. Plenty of room. This is a good chance. Well played. Well. Held nicely for the blue, but there's a little bit of work to be done here. <laughs> well, he chose to try and take another red off the side cushion. Six. That was a good recovery. He's just left this a little bit awkward and I don't think the pink's available, nope. So this will be a good shot to get back for the blue. Eleven. Nicely played and he's overdone it slightly. Well, he's still got a shot on the blue, but I think Brown might be favourite here. He's looking at the, the blue to the centre. Just chip it in. He might get a cannon into these two reds, actually, near the top cushion. Well, that will do. He's brought one off the cushion and he's landed on another one. So that's, a, that's turned out really good. Now, I just wonder, let's have a look at this again as he cuts this blue into the middle. I just wonder whether he might, with this next red, try and free up the pink and black. And if he misses them, he'll be on the blue anyway. Now comes the extension once again. Rod Lawler is looking well placed to move 3-1 in front of Jimmy White. White needs snookers in that fourth frame. Well, he tried it. Needs a bit of luck now, and he hasn't got it. Well, he's got a shot on the green. I'd like to have been on the blue. Ricky Walden has completed a 4-0 whitewash of Patrick Einzel. So the World Championship semi-finalist is safely through. He will now play the winner of the match between Jamie Jones and Sanderson Lamb. It looks for all the world as though it'll be Jones. Leading as he does at the moment. By three frames to nil, although Lamb does have a chance to get on the board in the next. He's 49 points in front in that fourth frame. Marco Fu is 3-1 up against Alexander Erzenbacher. Fu, the international championship runner-up, of course. And in the form, if not of his life, then certainly of recent seasons is Fu. He's been very consistent in recent times. Won the Australian Open title, of course, his second ranking success. Six years after his first at the Grand Prix, when he beat O'Sullivan. 
Well, just for one minute there, I thought uh, Rod would take. Sorry, hunting out Rod Lawler. Barry Pinch is going to take on the green there, but he chose not to. Scrappy second frame then. Mm. Pinches won't worry about that as long as he ends up winning it. If he can get level and put the disappointment of not taking the first frame out of his mind, then he'll feel he's right back in the match. 2 0 down though. That's going to take some retrieving. Well, that's the thing, isn't it, Phil? We know that 2 0 could become 3 0, then all of a sudden it's all over. And not just the fact that he might fall 2 0 down, the manner in which he's done so, Mike, because. He had a clear-cut chance to win the opening frame, and he's obviously in the mix in this one. You don't mind, do you, when your opponent strokes in a long red and clears up? There's yeah. nothing you can do about that. But when you've had a chance and you've spurned it, it takes well, a bit of getting over. Absolutely. You know, if your opponent's knocking in centuries and all over the place, there's not much you can do about that. But as you should say, he's still in the mix here in the second frame. play that too well. It's not bad though. Far away there, but played with safety. So just 15 points the difference then in the second frame. Well, again, another great safety from Mark there. He's given Barry a half chance, but he's got, at some stage, you've got to go positive. He's going to have to attack here. You've got to put points on the board. You can't stay negative forever. The last pot, nearly four and a half minutes. And he's got choices of a, a red to both corners here. He's got to take the game here to Mark Williams. Well, once again, refused a potable red, which might have won in the frame had it gone in. Well, I'm sorry, but you're not going to win the match by playing those, uh, Phil. There comes a point you're going to have to take one or two on. Well, it sends out the wrong message, doesn't it, to your opponent that you're really not confident that you're able to take your chances. I mean, there's a fine line between being positive and reckless, obviously, but, you know, like you're saying, you've got to make sure that you've got to let your opponent be aware that you're around. Pinch is perhaps mindful of the significance of this second frame he'll feel he has to win it to maintain realistic hopes of going on to win the match and perhaps he's more mindful therefore of adopting a, a safety first approach only time will tell if that will prove successful in it really with a safety success between these two boys.
a chance then for the Welshman. Might not take it on. He could play the red near the green. Well, he likes to attack wherever he can. Well played. Slow down. Well, keep going. And he's got the yellow to the middle. And he's just dropped in the place where I don't think you can see. It's a good part from distance, but I'm not sure whether you can see this yellow. Amazing. Williams, one. Fortune not favouring the brave on that occasion. Yeah, Mark's just giving himself a little bit of insurance here, putting that green safe. He's only got a few points lead, fair enough, but that green could count towards the end of this frame. Well, that's why Barry's immediately taking it off the cushion, which is a clever shot. All over him, he's put the red in there, the cushion. Hence the wry smile. It was a positive safety, though, which kind of begs the question why he wasn't as positive as that when he refused the red earlier in the frame. Our referee watches on. Lengthy second frame, this one. Vital for pinches that he wins it. Well, at least the Reds are in better position now if either player does get a chance. Mark with the slight upper hand here in the second frame. And that's moved the other one from the cushion, so Barry has to be careful now. Well, both players have to, really. There's only obviously 16 points in it. This second frame could still go either way. pace on the cue ball it just makes all the difference as regards to the decision to whether to take this red on or not but I don't think there's really an alternative because even if he plays a good safety he could still leave Mark that same red on I think he's got to take this one on and this is all about look at that over 11 minutes since the last pot for Barry it's all about practice now this this shot making sure that you cue properly off that back cushion the hours that you put in. Well, he's not playing it, he's playing the safety. Well, again, indicative, Phil, of the importance of this second frame for Barry Pinches. I think he might have left one on here. No. So still, a little bit of cat and mouse. Very tactical frame, this one. Rod Lawler now leads Jimmy White 3-1. Jamie Jones has a similar lead over Sanderson Lamb. 
as does Marco Fu over Alexander Ersenbacher. Alan McManus, 1-0 up against Alfie Burden. Ryan Day leading Robbie Williams by a frame to nil. Fergal O'Brien and David Morris have shared the opening two frames of their match. Fraser Patrick has a 2-0 lead over young Jack Lazowski. Great friend of Judd Trump, of course. Very talented player. And Adita Mehta is 2-0 up against Ryan Causden. So who's going to blink first then in this safety battle? Played with a lot of check side there. But again, a little bit pacey, and he has left a little tempter on the Barry to the right corner pocket. Barry has failed to be tempted thus far. It looks like he's going for this one. One good pot, position on the black. Could be a frame winner. Missed it by quite a margin. And he's left it as well. Well, that was arguably every bit as tough or easy, depending on how you look at it, as the ready declined earlier in the frame. But he's had a lead off there with Williams missing what for him was a pretty straightforward red. So this marathon second frame continues. Sixteen points the difference now. Yeah, I think that first frame with Judd Trump earlier today was about 35, 40 minutes or so. I'm surprised if this is going that way as well. That's a poor safety, though, from Williams. I think he's been OK, actually, Phil. I think he might have covered it, or has he? Well, it's obviously not straightforward for pinches. He's just looking to see if there's enough room to squeeze the cue ball through, perhaps with a trace of side. He's swerving it, and it goes. Not ideally placed on the black. The green's available, but that's taking the cue ball away from the reds. So he needs a good pot here. But if he can nail the black into the right center, he's got a great chance to win the frame. That's a great shot. Just got a touch low on this uh, on this red actually I think he's okay as so we watch the replay kept his line 
don't move much on these fine cloths, Phil, do they? They're not the olden days. Yes, very little nap on these cloths. You had to allow for some borrow, didn't you, back in the day? Easy. <laughs> I didn't say which day. <laughs> I know, I'm looking at you. I know you're thinking it, though. That reminds me, I was watching Jurassic Park the other night. Great film. Jimmy White in the background there, battling away against Rod Lawler, but he's up against it. Oh, he's missed the red as Harry pinches. pinches. Well, played such a good black. <laughs> How costly will that prove to be? One. Yes, Jimmy White is trailing 3-1 against Rod Lawler, but Mark Williams now with a chance to punish pinches again. Stole the first frame on the black after pinches have missed a mid-range brown. Eight. This one has been very scrappy. Nine. I was about to say, he needs to get high on this black to hold for the final red. He's just over done, sort of overdone it slightly as Barry looks on. They're never easy, those shots, to play when the object ball's right in the pocket. Might not see him take this on. Might lay the snooker. Yes, it was, he was just high, too high on the black. The red and the colour was all he needed. Well, there's no way he'll take this on. Consolation prize at the snooker instead, then. Mark Williams, 16. 24 the difference, 35 remaining. Pinches can't afford to miss this red. Well, it's definitely been a game of patience in this uh, in this frame. As you say, Phil, there's plenty of room to go around. He's trying to swerve it. That's a good hit. Well played. And he's nearly got one back. So still this frame is in the balance then. not oh we didn't want the cannon into the green if it misses the green it's a good shot one of William's great assets down the years has been his supremely even temperament nothing seems to phase him Even in the high pressure moments, he was always good at at least giving the impression as One. Pinches pulls out an absolute cracker from nowhere, but he was in control of his emotions. Now, that was a super attacking shot from Pinches, not necessarily typical of the snooker we've seen from him to this point. Can he capitalise? Still got the problem of the brown, though. Adita Meta. 2 0 up against Ryan Causton and 32 points up in the third frame. So he's looking good. Marco Fu, 3 1 up against Alexander Erzenbacher. Well, he's played that pretty well. Yeah, he's got a good angle to get down for this green. Now he needs an angle to get close to the brown to blue here. Play that well. He's got a good angle here, I think, just to pot this and drop him behind the brown. Doesn't want to leave himself straight on the brown, of course. Needs some sort of angle to get out for the blue. This is a great chance to level the matchup. 13. Needed a touch more. Now, here's a question Will he take this on? He's hoping so. Yeah, he's hoping also that he might rattle the brown. 
It's a tough pot. A couple of inches off the board cushion. Well, he hasn't taken a lot of risks so far, Phil, but I would say no. It's got to be a safety here. Well, he's prepared Maybe to wait, but he's played a good one. Well, that's a great shot. Williams' lead cuts to just 11 points then, 22 remaining, but he's in a snooker. Oh, that's short. Is that going to get there? Foul. Miss. Well, that will go back. Very pinch is full. Unless he wants to try and stun him behind the black and make the snooker even tougher. That's what he's looking at. Great opportunity to get tight to the black here. Well played. Well, he's still thinking clearly as Barry pinches. And if he can pinch this frame, game very much back on. 2 0 down as Williams misses the brown. Tall order. Foul. Miss. Now, is that a free ball? I think it is. Free ball. Well, he's got the full set here. And take the blue as the brown, of course. What an opportunity then for pinches to give Williams a taste of his own medicine. Williams, of course, pinching that opening frame on the final black. Now pinches has a chance to return the compliment here. The blue counts as the brown, of course. This will put him in front. You'll still need the pink, though. to do much with the cue ball however he can get right behind that pink take the pressure off himself yeah just leave this blue fairly straight actually eight no well i thought he might have tried a little bit more than that he, he needs to get close to this pink i might have to stun off the top cushion now a little bit of side i thought if he gets straight air on the blue all he had to do was screw back towards that side cushion yes he's made the shot rather more difficult than he needed to mm. this is the key shot coming up then can he get behind the pink? 13. Well, not bad. But, you know, I know it's frame ball, Phil, but we've seen these wobble before. They can catch the side cushion. Might leave things on here, but this to make it one apiece then. There you go. Always tough. Now, has he got the cover? I'm not sure he has. Well, to the point where I think Mark might have to um, swerve around the black here. Well, Pinch is the uh, orchestrator of his own downfall, really, there by playing what was a rather strange shot from brown to blue when he could have made the pink much easier than it ended up being with the rest. And if Williams gets through here, it's heartbreak Six. for Pinches. He's on the black. Well, psychologically, how do you recover from this? Two frames that he really should have won, Barry Pinches. Both lost on the final black. Mark Williams doubles his lead. I don't think he can believe he's 2-0 up, but he is. Pinches has had his chances. He's failed to take them, and he's paid the ultimate price. So Williams leading by two frames to nil after that very lengthy second frame. He needs two more frames to move through to the last 32, and we'll have that third frame for you after this short break.